I'm uh, here with uh, Tahir Bashir uh, from Media Law from Sheridan. So hi, Tahir, and thanks for joining me. Thank you for having me. And we continue our series of segments on buying and selling a company. And so we continue from uh, the last uh, episode, which uh, was addressing some of the issues concerning uh, the sale of a company. And I wanted to ask you about uh, uh, the involvement of investors. Of course, uh, if you have taken on a venture capital firm, for example, as a startup or as a company, you are going to find that at some point that investor is going to start to want to uh, cash out uh, as well. So how important is it to make sure that you start deciding to sell at the right time and that you're not pressured into doing so by a VC, for example? Um, well, you know, investors and business founders, uh, it's important that they're, they are aligned from the outset as to right. what the goal is in terms of the business. Uh, often that alignment isn't in place. So an investor has a time in his head to exit and the founder might not have the same time. So uh, how important is it? Well, it's important um, in that you've actually discussed it at the outset and also that you've uh, structured your deal with them to protect yourself against that. So. Right. I and mean, that could be that you know you have the first ability to purchase. So um, even if the investor is looking to exit, you, you know you could you know and you didn't want to exit, you you know you should have what's called preemption rights. I they have to sell to you first, um, and then that allows the investor to um, move away uh, from from the investment, cash out on it, and enables you to to keep uh, hold of the business. Uh, it's very rare that it's the other way around that the founder wants to exit and the investor doesn't. Um, yeah. Um, but it is quite common actually and it's a, uh, qu quite a common reason why investment isn't accepted by some founders because they are aware that there might be pressures on them to sell or move in a direction that they don't want to go in. Absolutely. And um, looking at the music field specifically, it's uh, often the case that uh, some of the deals that startups sign with rights holders uh, have clauses in them that prevent them prevent the deal from being uh, transported to, to a new buyer, for example. And so how careful do music startups have to be when doing those content deals to make sure that uh, that doesn't impede their opportunities to sell the company on? Yeah, it's a really important point, actually, because it's very common in, in content deals for the content provider, usually the majors, saying you can't uh, sell your business or you can't um, uh, assign your rights as part of that sale to, to third parties. So the job of the lawyer there is to be realistic and um, to effectively try and get a compromise position. One of the compromise positions uh, could be that, you know, okay, fair enough, we can't sell to a competitor because, you know, Universal's music ending up on a Sony owned platform might not be what they want. So um, ultimately it's about under, conveying to the content owners the reasons why you need that right because you know everyone in a startup business which is technology led uh, is looking for an exit at some stage. You know, it's, this is not you know, creating heritage companies usually. So it's important that, you know, at the point of sale, you can sell. And if you can't sell, you know, if they've got all of these clauses in them, which don't allow you to sell, then what that does is it creates the potential for a sale to fall through, right. or it creates the potential for the uh, investor to knock down the price dramatically. So from a technology or, or, or a DSP or, or a, um, a, co a company that's looking to sell, that's a real big disadvantage. So okay. it's all about um, making sure that you've got carefully drafted um, agreements. And interestingly, it's about getting those right at the start, because yeah. people don't think about these things when they're getting content in. And it's only later on that um, this becomes a problem. From a due diligence perspective, actually, that assignment clause is possibly the most important clause. Absolutely. And finally, I want to ask you about uh, music publishing. So, of course, the music business is very different from the technology business in that in the technology business, everything is moving so quickly. And so, yeah, as you were talking about timing, you know, a month can make the whole, the whole difference uh, between having a great sale or having a, a relatively poor sale. So, but in the music business, things are very different. For example, uh, companies that might have sold publishing catalogs five, seven, ten years ago on might actually be regretting it today because publishing catalogs have actually acquired a lot of value. So, uh, you know, it, 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 is it almost like uh, being in a investing in a fund and like you know if you have a copyright as a publisher you know thinking about the value of that in 10 20 years time 
Yeah, I mean, it's like anything. In an ideal world, you wouldn't sell anything, would you? Right. Uh, it's a bit like property. If you hold on to it, at some point, it's going to keep on increasing. However, you know, it's important to keep the market liquid. And the only way you can do that is by buying selling. Otherwise, right. you've got uh, um, monopolistic behavior and people just sit on things. So it's good for the economy that people sell. Um, but it is important to bear in mind what type of catalog you've got in that sense, whether it's what's called evergreen catalog or whether right. it's short-term type catalog. Typically, when you sell, that's taken into account. So it's part yeah. of the multiple. You know, if you've got a catalog that you know is shown year on year that it sells well, um, then that's going to have more value than a catalog which shows peaks in one year and then uh, uh, troughs in the other. Um, However, some people buy catalogs that might not have such good year-on-year um, -year values because they think they can do more with it. Yeah. Um, but yes, you know, at the selling at the point of sale, I mean, many many people who've sold copyrights regret it later on. Uh, having said that, there's usually a reason why they've sold it. They've need, they've needed the money. Absolutely. And well, thanks so much. Until the next segment. Thank you very much. Thank you.